my name is Jennifer Scanlon. I'm the Curatorial and Exhibitions Director at Oklahoma Contemporary, and I wanted to take you on a tour of our current exhibition called Jeffrey Gibson, Speak to Me. This is a solo exhibition of Jeffrey Gibson's work, uh, and as you'll see, he is an artist who works in many media. Uh, you can kind of see some of them right up here. He's interested in ceramics and textiles. He um, collages a lot of materials. Uh, he uses beading, and we also have a video piece uh, at the end of the exhibition. So he's working in a lot of different materials, and he also has a lot of references that he pulls into his work which I'll talk a little bit more about as we go through. Um, the exhibition is titled Speak to Me, and um, that comes from this piece right here, which is very central uh, to the exhibition. Jeffrey is um, a member of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians, and uh, on his mother's side, his mom uh, grew up out just outside of Tahlequah. Uh, so on his mother's side, he's Cherokee. So he spent a lot of time um, when he was a child coming to Oklahoma and Mississippi. His parents actually moved all around the world. So he lived in places like Korea and Germany and uh, all up and down the East Coast. But he would come back to Oklahoma and spend time with his family and in particular with his grandmothers who were really important to him. And this piece he explained to us on opening night is really connected to his grandmothers. He's had a series of dreams in which um, he is talking to them, trying to have conversations with them, uh, and trying to listen to the wisdom that they have to give him. So I'm going to take you around the side of the figure, and you can see here um, he has beaded uh, text into the figure that says, speak to me in your way. And then we, if we can go all the way around, so that I can hear you. And this is about um, communication. This is about paying close attention to what somebody's saying to you. And in this case, paying close attention to what the artwork is trying to say to you. So really focusing and trying to think through very carefully, very thoughtfully, um, what this artwork has to say. So we'll unpack that as we go through the exhibition. Um, as I said, the. Um, uh, Jeffrey uh, is Native American, and this is really important to um, one of the elements that really informs his work as a contemporary artist. Um, he's working in beadwork, uh, and this figure here is, in fact, um, mostly composed, if I could take a, this piece off, it's mostly composed of um, this beaded panel, this large beaded panel with a fringe um, and these jingles on it. and. Um, Jeffrey refers to this piece as a cloak, uh, which he says is, is transformational. It's meant to be a cloak that you put on and become another being. Um, so this figure here has put on the cloak and has become what he refers to as an ancestral spirit. So very much related to his grandmothers, uh, who in his dreams were trying to guide him uh, through these conversations he was having with them. Um, the idea of the transformational cloak uh, is also really connected to Jeffrey's interest in fashion, um, but not fashion necessarily only as something that you um, might wear to go out at night, but really the deeper meaning of fashion and what clothing means and how you communicate who you are uh, through the wearing of different kinds of clothes. Um, Another interesting thing about this piece, and it may be the first thing that you see, it's certainly the first thing, um, the first element of the piece that Jeffrey creates is this ceramic head. Um, these pieces are very recent, and he's just gotten into creating ceramics. Um, he was attracted to ceramics because, as he said, the beading, which you may have gotten a chance to see, is extremely labor intensive, it's very intricate, it's also very regulated. You have a certain grid that you can work with and a limited number of colors of beads and kinds of beads. So he was excited about ceramics because they really allow him to um, be expressive and immediate. So whatever uh, gesture he makes is immediately reflected in the clay. And you can see we have here a whole group of uh, clay heads uh, that um, show his experimentation in working with shape and form. And um, a, a lot of it has to do with the way he is 
um, manipulating the clay so it does turn into kind of a face or a head. Um, he was inspired in these particular pieces uh, by um, uh, Mississippian heads. The Mississippian culture uh, is a culture that um, is a Native American uh, civilization that was uh, based along the Mississippi River um, from about 800 to about 1400 and uh, was a advanced system of trade, advanced system of agriculture, uh, large cities, large populations, and um, one of the few remnants we have from that culture are uh, these beautiful uh, pots that look like heads. Um, they're assumed to be uh, sort of representations perhaps of um, dead people because they have closed eyes and different interesting tattoos on them. So um, Jeffrey was interested in those heads as a representative of this flourishing Native American civilization. Also interested in the fact that this civilization up until very recently hadn't really been studied because it counteracts a narrative that when the Europeans came to um, what is now the United States, it was uh, completely devoid of civilization and these kind of complex uh, systems. So um, he's really interested in, um, in looking at these stories that haven't been told. Once again, relating to the theme of the exhibition, that you really have to look carefully and dig deeply and think about the stories that are being told. On a different note, a kind of fun story that Jeffrey told me about one of these pieces um, is uh, this piece right here. Uh, so this is um, a piece that Jeffrey made recently. Uh, he uh, and his husband were uh, waiting. They had applied to adopt, and uh, they had just found out uh, that they were going to um, be the adoptive parents of a new baby. And it was a very exciting time, as I'm sure you can imagine. So this piece is really uh, very playful. It's about those feelings and I'm sure the joy that anyone can relate to when they find they're gonna have a new member of their family. Um, he's working beautifully with these curly ribbons on top. Um, there's a little girl, um, so maybe he's thinking about ribbons in her hair. And uh, the piece is called Waiting for More, which is um, a really nice connection to the feelings he was having right at that time. So I wanted to um, show you one of the large beaded panels that Jeffrey has really become known for. And I'm, I'm gonna stand briefly in front of it so you get a sense of the scale and then I'll get out of your way so you can really see how beautiful this piece is. Once again, Jeffrey's using beading and he has beaded text into the panel. Um, text is something that he finds uh, helps connect um, him to his viewers uh, helps relay messages um, because text can be read in many, many different ways. Uh, it also allows each person to look at the text that he might have and perhaps relate it to their own experiences. So you, uh, when you see the phrase, what we want, what we need, might have a lot of uh, ways in which that might apply to your life. In this case, Jeffrey is taking the text from a song, um, a rap uh, song by Public Enemy called Fight the Power. So this was music that was really important to him at a certain stage in his life, um, and he, in, which energized him, and so uh, he included those lyrics in this piece in relation to that music. Uh, Jeffrey's always been really interested in music. Uh, it's played an important part in his life. Many of the texts in this exhibition are directly uh, related to song lyrics of many different genres. Uh, and he also talks about his artwork a little bit in, um, in, within the framework of music. He calls it a mashup. So you might think of a DJ who brings in different elements of uh, different songs and turns them into one track. Uh, and that's a little bit what Jeffrey's done here. So I kind of wanted to use this as a way to point out the many references. Of course, uh, he's very interested, as I said, in, um, in Native American culture in general, his own, but also the wide variety that you might see at a place uh, like a powwow. Um, so we have elements like these are arrowheads here. Um, he's also of course included the beadwork here, this very elaborate beadwork. Um, things like the jingles and uh, the, the ribbons and fringe uh, that you would see at a powwow as part of powwow regalia. He in fact purchases these materials from the vendors who um, are part of that circuit. Um, 
He also includes, as I said, songs, uh, in this case, from popular culture. Uh, and these arrowheads are, in fact, attached to a lot of different materials that he has collected. Some of them he's bought recently, but a lot of them he's carried with him even since high school. Uh, one that he pointed out to me, which is really interesting, and I think you'll recognize it when you see it, is uh, this piece right here, which is, in fact, a toggle from a Burberry raincoat. Uh, so um, once again, this interest in fashion and the fact that he held on to this for a really long time and was really interested in, in the forms and shapes, but also the ideas behind those kinds of materials. Uh, and if we go back a little bit, you can also see that the yarn forms this checkerboard pattern, uh, and there's a checkerboard pattern that relates to it up above with the beadwork. Um, and uh, for those of you uh, like me who were around uh, in the 80s, um, this uh, relates to the van shoes that he used to wear all the time in the 80s as a young man. Um, so he's pulling from a lot of different places, interested in pop culture, interested in fashion, interested in different kinds of music, but and also connecting that to uh, his identity as a Native American and various elements of Native American materials and aesthetics um, that he draws from a number of different places. Um, let's take a look. At this piece right here. So here's another one of these great ancestral pieces. Um, I, I love the personality of the head there that's sticking out its tongue. Uh, this one also has uh, a cape on it. This cape has very uh, interesting um, materials. Uh, he has once again included uh, the beading. Um, he's also included uh, these studs, which are often associated uh, with sort of punk rock or, or leather studded jackets, motorcycle jackets. Um, so they form a pattern as well. Um, he has here uh, rickrack. Uh, and he is connecting that to uh, textiles, textiles made by um, Seminole Native Americans. And so just to point out that uh, he's using references not only from um, tribes that he's associated with and connected to, but uh, from a lot of different uh, cultures all over the United States. And we have here, um, this is actually uh, an old painting uh, of Jeffrey's that he did. Um, at an earlier stage in his career. He, in fact, at first studied as a painter and um, was working in abstract paint and had uh, in his studio all of these canvases. It was a few years ago, it became um, a sort of crisis moment for him, a moment of decision. He wasn't sure if he wanted to continue. Um, he was frustrated, uh, didn't feel like he was necessarily getting his message across with these canvases. Um, so he, embarked on a project, and that was to do collaborations. Uh, this was before he'd started working in beadwork, before he'd started incorporating these materials. And he wanted to do collaborations with uh, Native American artists and makers, including some in Oklahoma, but also all over North America. And uh, so that way began to learn about, or really be interested in some working with some of these materials, really be interested in working in beadwork. Um, so during one of these moments of crisis, he had all of these canvases, and he, uh, at one point he just picked them up and took them down to the laundromat and threw them into a washing machine. So in a way, he kind of took away their status or their existence as a canvas painting that's hung on a wall and really turned them more into um, textiles, into colored textiles that then became a part of the pieces that he created. So it's interesting to think about um, the ways in which we view materials in different ways, uh, whether they're on frames and hung on a wall, or whether they are textiles that have been incorporated into a cloak. For me, and I believe for Jeffrey, there's, there's no distinction. They're all different kinds of art. And I think um, one of the things that makes this exhibition special is the opportunity uh, to really reconsider materials and to think about contemporary art in all of the really interesting forms that it, uh, that it comes out in. In addition to the large figures, 
uh, the beaded panels and the ceramic. Sort of the fourth group that we have in this exhibition uh, are these smaller beaded figures. They're actually earlier than the large figures um, that we saw before. And they are really interesting. They, um, the inspiration for these figures is uh, a number of things. Uh, one of them is the Chinese terracotta warriors. Um, perhaps you've heard of these uh, warriors, a whole army that was found underground and dug up. Um, and they're all life-size, made out of clay, and uh, meant to protect, presumably, uh, the emperor who had them uh, made many, many thousands of years ago. Um, so Jeffrey is really interested in that idea and in fact he uses a lot of the sort of visual symbols of these warriors including um, these sort of uh, this sort of semi cape or these extra shoulder um, reinforcements that you can see on those terracotta soldiers uh, he's also using uh, the studs uh, the way they appear occasionally on the um, the terracotta warriors uh, armor that's in clay. And so he's interested in these kinds of silhouettes, but he's also interested in gathering a whole series of other references um, into this one piece. He has the uh, blankets, these wool blankets, often associated um, with uh, various uh, regions and Native American culture. Uh, he's got the beading going on. Many people have seen these. and. Um, related them to African beading as well, which is a definite interest for him. Um, and uh, he's added uh, materials of his own and patterns and colors uh, of his own as well. So he's really mixing up. Once again, it's this mashup idea that he's interested in. And he talks about these figures in particular as being his own warriors um, that present a new uh, proposition for native identity, uh, which is not necessarily only connected to um, one tribe or one culture, but re reflects a the kind of way that he grew up with uh, all over the world with lots of different influences and um, visual uh, connections. So one of the things that we were interested in including was um, our learning gallery, uh, which allowed us to give some context to uh, Jeffrey's work and also some opportunities for families to engage with the work. Um, around on the walls, you can see photographs by Lester Harrigera of powwows and other um, ceremonies and gatherings and uh, cultural celebrations for Native Americans that gives you some visual references for the kind of work and the materials um, that Jeffrey is using. Uh, and then we also have here for the kids in a uh, in a collaboration with uh, Metropolitan Downtown Library, thank you, Metropolitan Downtown Library, uh, we have all of these books, uh, some of which are related, uh, like this great Jingle Dancer book, um, to some of the specific uh, Native American culture, cultural uh, references, and some of them that are about very much about the materials. We've got beads here, um, the colors and patterns that Jeffrey's using. And thinking, speaking of patterns, we have uh, blocks here that kids can put together uh, to kind of start their own ideas about uh, making pattern and using color in different ways uh, to create different optical effects. We have naturally a threading station that allows uh, kids to uh, work with beads and adults, I have to say, I've seen more than one adult back here uh, creating bracelets or, or other kinds of um, items with uh, pipe cleaners and yarn and beads. Um, in reference to Jeffrey's interest in text, uh, we are um, asking for visitors to write down a phrase that is important to them uh, and put it up on our board here. And possibly my favorite part of this um, are the touch tiles. Uh, once again, Jeffrey's works, they're very inviting. Um, the materials that he's using are, they're both beautiful and, and uh, something that kind of cries out to be touched. We can't touch them in a gallery, um, but we can certainly touch things like animal hide here. And even more fun, we can hear the jingles, important component of them for uh, Jeffrey. Um, so it allows all of these tiles here allow you to kind of really sense uh, what's going on uh, with the works out in the galleries and get a closer look at them, but also be able to touch them. So this is a really fun thing. Our education department put uh, this together and we're excited to invite families in here to explore Jeffrey's work this way as well. So 
really, I'm sorry that uh, one aspect of the show that I'm probably not going to be able to show you um, in this particular um, segment, but which you'll have to come to Oklahoma Contemporary to see, is a video that Jeffrey put together. Uh, and the video really started the whole uh, thought process behind curating this exhibition for me. Uh, it's called One Becomes the Other. It's a project that Jeffrey did during a residency at the Denver Art Museum. Uh, the museum has a lot of uh, artifacts. Uh, it probably has one of the largest collections of Native American objects uh, in the United States, if not the world. And it, uh, it interested Jeffrey. He'd had, when he was young, the opportunity to work with uh, Native American objects at the Field Museum in Chicago. And he was part of the project to uh, repatriate some of those objects that were very important and needed to be back with the tribes that had additionally, uh, had originally created them. And so he spent a lot of time thinking about those objects and talking to elders and the tribes about those objects and what they meant uh, so that the objects he came to realize were for those uh, elders really living things. They referred to the fact that the objects were being poisoned or were being suffocated uh, in the spaces in the museums. So Jeffrey did this project with the Denver Art Museum uh, in which he invited members of the powwow community to come and have dialogues with the objects and he filmed them unscripted. Uh, you also get a chance to uh, see and hear drumming uh, and dancing throughout the museum as well. Um, so when I saw this particular video, it really brought to uh, brought to life for me the fact that objects um, can be living and so resonant and tell so many stories, um, which once again uh, connected to uh, the main title of the exhibition, Speak to Me. So I am going to urge you all to come in and see this video. It's, um, it's very moving and I think it also relates to all of us. I think all of us have objects at home that for us are really important that relate to maybe our grandmothers, maybe other people that have been important in our lives. And uh, in that way, um, we can all think about objects that tell stories uh, and objects that we can have conversations with. So um, I urge you all to uh, come to the exhibition, to check it out in person, to maybe uh, have some fun in the learning gallery, and to um, really experience Jeffrey's work in person.